Hey guys, Jack here, hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna to do a comparison of two of my personal Fender USA Strats. I've got this USA Highway 1, and I've got this USA Custom Shop 62 reissue. Let's delve in and check out some of the differences. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I just want to say a quick apology once again for the delay between this video and my last one. But yeah, we're back on form now. And I thought I'd start with some gear talk as you tend to like that here on the channel. I was recently playing this guitar quite a lot, which is my USA Custom Shop Fender 62 reissue Strat. But in more recent uh, the past few days, I've actually been playing this guitar quite a lot as well, which is a USA Highway 1 Strat. It kind of got me thinking about what are the actual differences that make me want to pick up this guitar more often than this one? And I think that's a question that a lot of guitar players can't actually answer because when it boils down to it, you know, both strats are made in the US. Obviously the custom shop commands a much higher price and there must have been a few significant reasons as to why I chose to purchase this guitar uh, several years after owning and purchasing that Highway 1. So I'll give a little bit of background on each guitar. Um, I'll actually start with the Highway 1 because I think that's the most interesting place to start. And in this video, I want to try and delve into some of the differences as to why you might decide to spend the extra few hundreds or thousands even of pounds or dollars on a custom shop level instrument. Let's check it out. <laughs> So I'm just going to have a bit of a noodle on each guitar. I'm going to do about four different tones. A total clean tone, uh, a clean tone with reverb and delay. I also want to use the clean channel with King Tone Duelist Overdrive pedal, like a typical tube screamer into a clean amp kind of strat tone. And I'm also going to use the dirty channel of the amp. And the amp in question, by the way, is back there, the Orange Rocker Verb 100. I'm using the clean channel for most of the tones and the dirty channel, like I say, for the more distorted bits. There's a bit of onboard reverb as well and all the tones you're hearing are being pumped through from the Rocker Verb through my Boss Wisercraft Tube Amp Expander into Logic. I'm using the new Celestian Speaker Mix Pro plugin for all the speaker simulation. All right, so starting here is actually gonna be quite interesting. This is a guitar that I don't think I've featured here on the channel before, apart from maybe way, way back in some of my earliest demos of pedals on this channel. Uh, this is actually the longest sort of professional level guitar I've ever had. Uh, I mean, I've owned this for the longest. I think I bought this back in about 2008 or 2009. And uh, I seem to remember from taking the neck off a couple of years ago, or actually many, many years ago, I think this might be a 2007 or 2008 guitar. So it's also one of the oldest instruments that I own, uh, even though it was new more or less at the time that I got it. So for those who don't know, the USA Highway 1 range came around the mid noughties and it was kind of Fender's way of getting a USA guitar into the hands of players at a lower price point. Nowadays it's been replaced by I think the American Performer range, which was formerly the American Special and former to that it was the Highway 1. So that's the lineage of this guitar. It's kind of the entry point to USA Fender. So the reason I chose this guitar back in the day was I was a massive Stevie Ray Vaughan fan and in fact a lot of the guitar players I was really into at that time, being around age 12 or 13, were Strat players. So I was really into Stevie Ray, um, Clapton, Jeff Beck, uh, surprisingly enough as well guys like Yngwie Malmsteen, who was actually a very significant uh, reason in my choosing of this particular Strat. Bunch of those guys, Hendrix of course as well. And so this seemed like a great way to get into that world. You know, it's a proper Fender, a proper USA Fender. And I didn't know much about guitar specs at the time, but I realized that it's, it's a proper Fender. It's three single coil pickups, you know, traditional Strat layout. The pickups that were in this guitar when I got it, I think were either 
the Texas Special pickups, or they were, I can't remember the name of them, but they were kind of like a, a slightly higher output um, vintage voiced single coil pickup. So Fender were trialing a new set of pickups, I think, in this guitar for the first time. So maybe it wasn't Texas Specials, I don't quite recall. If anyone knows what was on stock Highway 1 guitars around that time, drop a comment below. But it just played great, you know, it's got quite a comfortable, um, feels a little bit like a D-shaped neck, once again, I'm not 100% sure on the specs. But the major factor for me with this guitar was the big headstock. And it was actually this that swung it for me. I remember choosing between this and a classic player 60s Strat, and they both had several things going for them. This had the big headstock and the comfortable satin finish on the body and the neck. Uh, but the classic player 60s, I remember really strongly considering because it had the two post bridge, two post trim, which I was very into whammy stuff back in the day. And I liked the extra stability and the tuning that that gave. But nevertheless, between the two, I ended up choosing this one, and I'm very pleased that I did so. I think this has aged considerably better than some of those other Fender guitars from around that era. So I think that for a lot of people, this is what they may be looking for out of a Strat. You know, it's got all the hallmarks of a classic Strat, and particularly this model not having glossy finish on the body or the neck, it's kind of got a bit of that rustic, vintage aesthetic to it anyway, and the same for the feel. And I reckon that if you if you didn't know what you were playing, you know, given that I've had this guitar for well over a decade now and played it a lot, uh, at least several years ago I played this a lot, it's worn in quite nicely and it feels like a real high-end neck. The only thing I've changed on this really significantly at the moment is the pickups. So as I said, it formerly had the stock Highway 1 pickups, whatever they were. Quite recently I put in um, the pickups actually that came out of my green Sur Classic Pro. SSVs in the neck and the middle and an ML single coil I got put in the bridge. I think it's still a stock pots, uh, stock bridge, stock tuners, nothing's really changed. This guitar is due a little bit of love, I think it needs like a proper refret because uh, the frets are pretty pitted now and it's a little bit buzzy in that regard as well. Uh, so, you know, it needs a little bit of attention but given that I haven't really done much to this guitar at all, it still plays very well and it sounds pretty good as well I think for a just for an off-the-shelf Fender with, with replacement grip, uh, pickups granted but I just think this has got a really great tone to it. It's got a real kind of vintage vibe, but at the same time, I don't know what component-wise is contributing to this. This guitar seems to have a lot of like a solid punch to it. It's quite bright and open, but it's also got this mid-range, and I couldn't tell you why that is. Maybe it's because of the satin finish. Uh, maybe it's just what goes through my head to play when I pick up this guitar. You know, given what the aesthetics and the feel of it kind of inform me to do. But this does something different to any other S-style guitar that I have. It's got this, like I say, a solid punch, and I feel a little bit bad actually because I've kind of relegated it to backup position. Like it will be back up to the custom shop now, or it'll be back up to the Sir guitars when I go out and gig. But it's actually quite a bit better than that. I think with a little bit more attention and a bit of care going into this guitar, this could be something really, really special, and actually not too far off the custom shop that's in the running with it today.
Okay, one thing I did to this guitar and I did to the custom shop as well is that I actually just tried to block this trend down as much as I could. Put five springs in there, the bridge is totally decked to the body and I think that gives it a little bit more sustain and obviously it helps with the tuning stability as well. Though like I said, I do think this guitar needs a bit of a tweak uh, in certain departments. It definitely needs some attention on the nut and the frets because it does slip with the tuning a little bit sometimes. And that would be one reason why I may not want to play this guitar as much as I would other guitars that are a little bit more reliable with the tuning. Uh, but that's just a case of this guitar just needs some attention, really. So it's quite interesting, I think, how it stacks up compared to the Custom Shop. And as I've talked a lot about this guitar, let's switch over and I'll introduce the Custom Shop 62 to you. All right then, so this is my Custom Shop Strat. I bought this about two years ago and it came in to Peach Guitars. I demoed it and I just really, really fell for it. I fell for the feel of the neck more so than anything else. And despite the fact that I already had that Highway 1 Strat, I already had my green Sir as well for an S style, this just suggested something different to me and it made me think that, you know, maybe the Custom Shop offers something different to any of the other S style guitars that I have. Now, as a guitar player, it's often quite difficult to quantify and to kind of, um, justify purchasing another guitar based on its own merits but sometimes it just does something to you and you realize that you've got to have it as part of your collection and that's what this guitar did to me when i got this this had been modded with um, a clapton style tbx tone circuit and mid boost circuit i had it like that for a while but i got tom the tech at peach guitars to get that out quite quickly i just wasn't didn't love it. For some reason it added a lot of volume to the guitar even without using the, the mid boost. So like just without using the tone control or the mid boost on 10 this guitar was so much louder than everything else it made it quite difficult to use uh, in many situations just because this guitar had for some reason so much more output than anything else and I didn't want that. So I just took all that out, had the stock pots put back in with the uh, pickups were the same. I think these are fat 60s pickups, but I'm not 100% sure on what's in this guitar. So that's something both these strats have got in common. I'm not really a strat guy, as I have said in previous videos, so I don't really obsess over the details about them, which is perhaps a loss, and I should do. And I'm certainly considering some upgrades. So with this guitar, you know, there's stuff like, um, I'd be considering putting one of those King Tone pot switches in to give you a few different uh, varieties of tone just from the stock pickups. I like the tone of these pickups anyway, so I don't really want to change those. Once again, this is just kind of bridges decked down. Uh, it is still usable as a trim, but I just don't use it. So I might like to upgrade the block or something in there to make it a little bit more stable and a little bit more toneful as well, a little bit more full range sounding. The neck though is what sold me on this guitar, and I guess it's just like a standard early 60s profile, but it's really nicely worn in, especially down here on the first uh, three or four frets. It's just super comfortable. I don't know if this was d like this from the factory or the previous owner of this guitar worn it in himself or had something done to it. I don't really know, but it's super comfortable. And I just feel like I play better on this guitar, and I don't know why. The tone is great as well. Uh, it's a little bit darker, I think, than that, than that Highway 1. It has a little bit more fullness to its sound. It could be the pickups, but I think there's a lot going on acoustically as well, because just playing these guitars acoustically, the properties align. The Highway one is brighter, zingier, but quite solid sounding. This one just sounds more like a vintage Strat, and that's one of those, once again, impossible to define characteristics of a guitar, but it's just there.
So obviously since I've got this guitar, this has become my main go-to if ever I wanted a Strat tone, a classic Strat tone. The Highway 1 was kind of relegated, but like I say, bringing it back and just spending a little bit more time with it, there's certain merits to each. So I'm going to let you judge for yourself in the playing clips which you think is kind of the better sounding Strat. Obviously they're both great sounding guitars and they are both Fenders and they both have a lot of the same properties to each. They're both older wood bodies with maple necks, rosewood fingerboards, similarly voiced pickups I would say, maybe uh, slightly more mid-scooped with Sir pickups in the in the Highway 1, but they're similar so you know it's quite close to call but I think it's just an interesting point to make here is that what is it about these custom shop guitars that so many of us lust after and what makes them the guitars that we go to, what makes them feel better, what makes them sound better I think a lot of it always, as always is the case, comes down to the feel and it's just that thing that you cannot put your finger on. Like I said, the reason I got this guitar in the first place was predominantly because of the feel. It didn't feel like any other guitars I had and as good as this neck feels, where I've worn it in and it's nicely, uh, it's not gloss, it's a nice satin neck, it's really smooth, this one is still just steps above. Now not everyone is going to notice that kind of difference, it depends on what you're looking for and the kind of the way that you play the guitar. But for me, and I think many of you watching, that is the case, it's always the feel that is the factor that makes you spend the extra money on a higher end guitar. But like I say, let me know in the comments, what's your experience been? Do you have two different levels of USA strats, or any strats for that matter, and do you find that you can get just as good results? out of a less expensive guitar. Alright guys, thank you very much as always for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed today's video, comment down below with your thoughts like I've said, and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel if you're new here. I appreciate you checking this video out, and if you'd like to see more content from me, make sure you're subscribed and you ring the bell. There's going to be more stuff on the way very soon. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Alright folks, Jack here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to make a welcome back. No. I wanted to do something a little bit geary and show you a couple of my personal Fender Strat cast... <laughs> Fender USA made Strats. Let's take a look at some of the differences and see what's what.